Hello everyone, I'm Vincent Huang. In this video, I'm going to talk about paper, NTT modification for anti-young friendly rings. This is a joint work with Qingming Wang Minchen, Matthias Kangfisher, Ye Ge Seller, Chen Zhishi, and Bo Yang. Let's first recall some useful properties of number theory transforms. Suppose the integer n is invertible in the ring R. Given the vertical element theta and the principal and zeros of unity omega, the size n any key is an isomorphism from the ring of x over x n minus theta to n to the product ring where each ring is of x over x minus theta times omega to the i. If theta to the n is 1, then we call it secret angle key. If theta to the n is negative 1, then we call it naked secret angle key. Additionally, if theta to the n is the nth power of a power of omega, then we can use this definition of angle key for explaining each step of quality of key. This will be shown in the next slide. As a ring isomorphism, any key provides alternative approaches for multiplying and adding up to point yomios. For multiplying A and B, <coughs> we can first apply any key on A and B, point multiply them, and apply the inverse of any key. This multiplicative property is also called the convolution theorem. Since any key can be computed efficiently, we can also compute the product efficiently. For adding up to polynomials, we can also compute the energy in a similar fashion. But it doesn't but it's not very clear how we can really benefit from any keys. This property is actually crucial for the energy for saber, and we'll see it in the next slide in the next few slides. Fast Fourier transforms are several options for computing any keys efficiently. In our paper, we implement three epic keys. The first one is cool to the epic key. After applying the cyclic any key, for the second isomorphism, we we'll apply the observation in the previous slide by setting theta to omega to the i. For the second epic key, we implement Jensen epic key. Jensen epic key is twisting the polynomial rings to the cyclic ones whenever possible. So for the second isomorphism, we transform the polynomial ring of x over x n1 minus omega to the n1i to the polynomial ring of x over x to the n1 minus 1. We then continue with cyclic angle keys. The third FF key is Gustrick. Gustrick is transforming a one-dimensional convolution into a multi-dimensional convolution. After the transformation, we can then apply Cooley to the FF key for each of the dimensions for computing second convolutions. In our paper, <coughs> we implement a two-dimensional transformation and then we'll apply quality FF key in the dimension of Y and compute psychic convolution for the dimension of Z. The most important operations <coughs> for implementing any keys are Montgomery locations. On Cortex and 4, we implement 32 bit Montgomery location. <coughs> by utilizing the long multiplication instructions. For FVX2, we implement system B Montgomery multiplication by utilizing multiplication instructions returning high product. The main reason for this is because there are no 32-bit multiplication instructions returning high product in FVX2. SABA is a lattice-based game based on modular learning with rounding. The polynomial ring chosen by SABA is 
z 81 92 of x over x to the 256 plus 1. The security of sigma is specified by the modular dimension L. And the most time consuming operation is the matrix vector multiplication. The matrix A is an L by L matrix where each of the components is a polynomial in R cube. For polynomials in the vectors, all of its coefficients are within plus or minus mu over 2. We take a closer look at how NGD friendly and how NGD unfriendly sector is. First, the polynomial modulus is a negative convolution. This implies that if we can define negative entities, then we don't need to expand the polynomial degree. Next, we look at the coefficient ring Z8192. In this ring, we can define entities given isomorphisms. Therefore, the coefficient ring is regarded as entity friendly. A straightforward solution for this is to choose a large modulus or several moduli bounding the maximum value of one point in the location. But entities actually tell us much more than multiplying two point nodules. In particular, for a well defined entity, the summation of several products of polynomials can be computed with the aid of entities as follows. First, <coughs> we apply entities to all the polynomials. Then, <coughs> then, we accumulate several point locations, and finally, we apply the inverse of entity. This characterization suggests that the structure of Measure to vector multiplication is entity friendly because we only need to transform the vector once, and at the end, we only need to compute the inverse of entities for a vector. For the entities for the measure vector multiplication, we start by computing the result as if z is a coefficient ring. Therefore, the maximum value is bounded by 2 to the 20 times mu times L. On quarter and 4, we choose a 32 bit prime Q prime bounding the maximum value. Then, <coughs> we compute any keys in Z Q prime. For FBX2, we choose two 16 bit primes P0 and P1, where the product is bounding the maximum value. Then we compute entities in P0 and in P1. After computing the entire product in these two primes, we then apply CRT to derive the result as if the as if Z is a coefficient ring. For computing the entire product of, with any keys in a certain prime ring, we need L plus L2 2 any case for transforming the vector and the matrix, L2 2 point locations, and L inverse of any case. We made the following decisions for our Cortex and 4 implementation. First, we compute incomplete any case given four coefficient polynomials. This is because there are only 14 general purpose registers on Cortex and 4, and we find that computing three layers of entities at a time is the most economical choice. Therefore, in total, we we'll compute six layers of entities given four coefficient polynomials. The second decision is to decide how to accumulate the products of for coefficient polynomials. For example, suppose we are going to compute H as a summation of products of P and Q, and we focus on the constant term of the result. Then, we see that there are at least two approaches for computing the constant term. The first approach is 
to compute the 64 bit value of each segment and reducing them to 32 bit immediately. And finally, accumulate the 32 bit result. The second approach is to compute the 64 bit value of the of the constant term, so we only need to reduce to 32 bit value once. On Cortesian 4, due to the register pressure, it's not very clear which approach is faster. And our experiment shows that the second approach is slightly faster than the first approach. Furthermore, we expect that the second approach is going to be a lot faster than the first approach if we have a lot more registers. Now, we take a look at multiplying polynomials in Yan Chu. There are in total six parameter sets. In our paper, we implement polynomialization for four of the parameter sets. The largest two parameter sets are introduced after we submit our paper. The polynomial ring for polynomialization Yan Chu is Z is Z Q of X over X to the N minus one where q is a power of 2 and n is a prime. We are targeting the polynomial location where one of the modulicants is ternary. In other words, all of its coefficients must be within plus minus 1. In this video, I only focus on the differences of the crystal invention in n true and in n true prime. In n true prime, we are given two primes for specifying the polynomial rings as the large Galois field. And I'll compare the parameter set 761 in n true prime with the parameter sets 677 and 701 in n true. <coughs> in both implementation of group strip, they are almost the same except for the reduction to the target polynomial rings. And in both implementations, the reduction of polynomial modulus is performed before the reduction of the coefficient ring. First of all, we can look at the polynomial modulus in N2 and find that for reducing to a coefficient, we, we need one addition. This also implies that the maximum value if, z, if we regard z as a coefficient ring is n times q. On the other hand, the polynomial modulus n true prime is x to the p minus x minus 1. So to reduce into a single entry, we need two additions. This also implies that the maximum value of the result in z is n times 2p minus 1. So already, because of the polynomial modulus, we find that we need one addition on average, and we also need to choose a larger prime for compute s in z. Next, we look at the reductions of coefficient greens. For n true, the coefficient ring is a power of 2. Therefore, we can pack two half words before the reduction. And after packing into a register, we can then reduce two coefficients at a time with the instruction logical end. So on average, for each coefficient, we only need 0 0.5 cycles for the reduction. But if we look at the coefficient ring n true prime, then the coefficient ring, because of the coefficient ring is a prime ring, we need 32 bit arithmetic for reducing the reduction. And reduce the coefficient ring with a two cycle implementation for error reduction. After the reduction, we then pack two half words into a word. Therefore, on average, we need two cycles for reducing each entry. On, 
on, on average, we'll really see that we can save 2.5 cycles for reducing each coefficient. This gives us about 1750 cycles of reduction on the cycle count. But in fact, we have a slightly greater reduction, and this is because that polynomials in N true are shorter than true prime. I'll talk a little bit about some implementation considerations with FBX2. For FBX2 implementation, since we are implementing system, two system built entities, we have to compute CRT for acquiring the result as in Z. For the CRT, we implement the divide difference form for the computation. And we find that this approach is more favorable when there are only two primes for the CRT. Another important consideration is the magnitude of the intermediate results. We compute the worst case intervals from the given input intervals. For the computation of the intervals, we follow precisely the arithmetic instructions and and grab precisely the rules of unity for computation. We look at the results of our implementations. The most time-consuming operation in SABER is the measure vector multiplication. On quota SM4, we obtain a reduction of 61% of cycle count, and we obtain a reduction of 32% on Skylake. Another important Polynomial arithmetic in Saber is the inner product. On code SM4, we reduce the cycle count by 42%, and on Skylake, we reduce the cycle count by 55%. On code SM4, the reduction of the ratio of inner product is less than the ratio of metric vector multiplication. This is expected because the structure of metric vector multiplication is more friendly for any keys than the structure for, of inner product. But I think a little bit weird why we obtain a greater ratio of reduction on Skylake for the inner product. And the main reason is that for the, for the inner product on Skylake, we, perform, we compute in the way by assuming one of the vector is already transformed by entities. So the cycle count is excluding three entity transformations. On quotas and four, we are not doing so, mainly because we are trying to make the implementation compatible with the reference implementation. This is a result of the fourth thing of Saber. On quotas and four, we are obtaining a reduction from 22% to 26%. On Skylit, we obtain a reduction from 5% to 10%. We also have the result, of, this is a result for CCA transform. We also have the result for CPA in our paper. This is a result for multiplying a polynomial with a ternary polynomial in N2. On code SM4, we obtain a reduction for all of the parameter sets, even for the smallest parameter sets. And this set a new criterion for applying entities on code SM4. On Skylake, we are not able to have a speed up for the smallest parameter set, but we still acquire reduction between 7% to 15% for all other parameter sets. This implies that when the security level becomes larger and larger, we believe that on both Cortex M4 and Skylake with FX2, any key is more favorable for entry. This is a result of the fourth thing of entry. We ignore the cycle count of key generation because the key generation is dominated by the inversion of polynomial and we are not targeting the inversion here. For the encapsulation and decapsulation of the parameter sets 677 and 6, 
and 701. On quarter 74, we obtained a reduction between 3% to 6%. And on Skylake, we obtained a reduction between 1% to 2%. We also implement entry keys for the round two summation log. The polynomial ring chosen by log is z q of x over x to the m minus plus one, where q is uh, two two fifty one, and n is a power of two, which which are five twelve and ten twenty four. In the log summation, uh. Polynomial allocation are also of the form where one of the number can is small, is ternary. During the implementation for any keys, uh, we find that in the previous implementation, it, the approach is somewhat a quadratic time in n. And we believe this is the main reason why we are able to obtain a vast speed on multiplying two polynomials. Due to the vast speed of multiplying two polynomials, we obtain a reduction of cycle comfort of source in our log between 67% to 79% on Cortex and 4, and between 20% to 61% on Skylake. In conclusion, we find that even though the coefficient rings of Saber, Entry, and Log are entity unfriendly, we can still benefit from entities. In particular, for Saber, the polynomial modulus is entity friendly, and the structure of mesh vector multiplication is also entity friendly. For Entry, since the degrees of polynomials is large, we can still benefit from entities. And for Log, both the polynomial modules and the degrees of the polynomials suggest that any keys are very useful. For computing result as in Z, on Cortex N4, we choose the 3 to bit prime bounding the maximum result, and for FBX2, we choose two 16 bit primes bounding the maximum result. There are some works worth noting in this period. In our paper, we optimize Sabre on Cortex N4 only for the purpose of speed. And we thank Mitchell from Brian Dunk for integrating stack optimization of Sabre. For even more stack optimized Sabre on Cortex N4 and more about NDTs, there's a paper Multimodal NDTs for Sabre on Cortex N3 and Cortex N4. For NDTs with 64 bit on V8A, there's a paper, Neo NDT, Faster Deleting Kyber and Sabre on Cortex S72 and 8.1. In the paper, the authors introduce a three instruction single weight modeling location and explain how to multiply polynomials in x to the 2 or 4 minus zeta essentially as a safety convolution without requiring the existence of a square root or fourth root of zeta. Thank you for your attention.